I know this is going to shock you, Al. Mm hmm. But Moroku's after the ladies in this week's episode. What? That never happens. Do you remember when we talked during the movie? About how Moroku how... had done better? Yes, and how he hadn't been doing the whole, hey, you want to bear my children? Yeah. <laughs> Delio, and then he just goes out and does that immediately in the like very beginning of this episode. He just proved us wrong. Well, I guess in the in the beginning, beginning quote unquote, of we got a lot of recap in this episode. <laughs> They recap the entirety of the series up to this point. Like, who each is character weird. is, what they're yeah. about, like, who the villain is. Like, what? Okay, so I guess that technically does make sense. Like, it, Oh, it, it because is the weird. movie. No, 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 no. Because, like, this is the second episode of season three, right? But right. prior to this, they had taken, like, a month off. Oh. Because the last episode had been on December 17th of 2001, and this airs on January 14th, 2002. So my thought was that they were doing this because people might have come to the series because of the movie. That is, yeah, you are. that is correct, yes. That could be a, a definitely a thing. But, but why also would they probably, not have done that last time? Probably because like, it had just come out. Yeah, okay. That's fair. And they're already going on this long break, so it's just a good refresher for everyone to be like, here's the story so far in case you've forgotten, because it's been a while since you've watched an episode. Yeah, okay, that tracks, that tracks. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's at least my hypothesis for that anyways. But hello, welcome to this week's episode. Jared now watch Inuyasha. It is episode number 57. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen Ladium. Hello, hello. We are discussing season three, episode number two, or episode number 56, entitled Temptress in the Mist. Sounds like a good song title. Yeah, it totally does. You want to write a song called Temptress in the Mist with me? Look, the last time I tried to write, write a song, I was like on MySpace. I've never written a song. And that wasn't good, so let me tell you. <laughs> I've never written a song. Let's do it, though. Let's, let's, All right. let's make some like sweet like vaporwave <laughs> song called Temptress in the Mist. Let's do it. Or Synthwave um, is the word I'm looking for. Synthwave. Uh, so yeah, Moroku is he's trying he's finding ladies. They're in need, and he just wants to touch their butts. <laughs> they're in need. Go to go to the bone zone with them, and also gets gets pickpocketed by them, and it's like, oh man, what a shame. I do love though that they have him like giving this lady a massage and rubbing her butt and all that, and then he's like, "Can you bear my children?" And then she's immediately like, "No, I gotta go. Bye." <laughs> like I didn't sign up for this part. No. Nope. Just taking the, the money. Whole, the rest of the group's just like, bro. 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 He's caught a lecher like three times this episode. He does. Pretty and good. like he when he loses his money and everyone's just like, we you had this coming. Yeah. This was eventually going to happen to you. Yep. You fool. Yep. Um but eventually they go into this village and the, all the ladies there are like in despair because their husbands have all been taken away and Roku's trying to find a way to sneak in there and and get some, but the yep. lady's like, "No, we're all married. Yep. We all have husbands. That's why we need your help." And he's Die. like, oh, "All right, I guess I'll go." And he's going to go off by himself, but then Song was like, "No, I'm going to, because he's a dummy and he will do something completely stupid because I know him, and I have to make sure he doesn't do anything completely stupid." Yep. And then we get this great back and forth between Kagome and Inuyasha, and Kagome's <laughs> like. Y'all think Songo's got the hots for Moroku? As and Shippo's like, Shippo's like, yeah, totally. 100%. I completely agree with you on this. And Inuyasha's like, huh? What are you guys talking about? That's de- No, no. He that's just strokes definitely her not butt a, a thing. Lot. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, she, she's just waiting for him to set the right atmosphere and everything. That's what a lady wants. And Inuyasha's like, atmosphere? You mean like clouds and the weather and stuff? Cl- like, no, you idiot. <laughs> clouds and stuff i think she just like says like oh you were way more dense than i thought you were yeah that- <laughs> and he's just like i don't know dude i'm just here <laughs> i don't see it yeah it's amazing it's a really really good really good part bit. of this episode <laughs> yeah um so songo c- catches up to moroku and he's like why are you here? She's like, look, you're going to do something stupid. And he's like, okay, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, you want to wear this bracelet? It'll help you in this demon's layer and everything. Let's go. So they uh, they go in. I think they get separated or something real quick. Yeah. And then Songo basically finds all the dudes, but they've been aged. And they're like, she's like, hey, old man, what's going on? Like, I'm not an old man. <laughs> hey, neither am I. I'm not old. 
hey, I'm not old either. Why is she called us an old man? <laughs> but they're all old men, and they're like, yeah, we, we got lured in here, and we saw this princess, and we looked into her eyes, and then we had this nice dream, and then, man, all our energy went away. It's weird. Anyways, we're just here now. And then Moroku basically finds this princess and is wooing her, whining and dining her, not 69ing her. Oh, my God. She's, he's basically like, you know, I'm going to help you out, princess. She's like, oh, I'm so lonely. Would you stay the night with me? He's like, of course, princess. And then uh, Sango hears everything from these dudes and is like, oh, my God. He's going to he's gonna fall into this trap like the idiot he is, and I got to go rescue him. So she runs off and finds this castle and basically finds them about to embrace uh, Song, not Songo, Moroku and this princess. Mm-hmm. Or they're going like, to kiss. Yeah, it's the, the same thing. They're smooch- and she's smooch- like, ah, Moroku, you idiot. And the princess is like, whoa, who's, there's a woman here. What's going on? I'm going to transform into a coyote. Rawr, 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 rawr. And the demon can't see Songo yep. because of the beads Moroku gave her. And Moroku is basically just trying to take care of this and fight it and song was like why isn't he letting me attack or anything and Roku's like just carefully trying to do things he sets some scrolls off he bonks it and basically shoots out the actual princess from the demon like separates the two and the whole time he's like i'm sorry princess i'm sorry yeah. this is gonna hurt a little bit uh songo throws the the boomerang at the demon bonks him and the demon's like where are you and then eventually he's able to just randomly see songo for no reason and somehow break the the bracelet yeah. i don't know how that happened it doesn't make any sense i don't either uh he, the demon claws at songo and cracks the the boomerang Roku throws some more charms at him and basically stuns it for a bit and then or songo's able to boomerang it again and chop it in half and kill it which is again very cool very cool she should do this more often like that is that is a rad move it's very cool uh everyone goes back to normal the the dudes do um moroku is comforting the princess sango's very not happy with this Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then moroku's like yeah i'll take you to the village and everything it's cool she turns to a light and goes away and he's like yeah she was just a soul who got trapped here was very lonely couldn't move on to the afterlife and then this demon took her soul and her body and started using it to lure men here to take their energy and everything how rude this is very rude anyways let's go back <laughs> and then he buries the buries quote unquote to the princess and yep. is like because everyone else is there now with the the husbands and wives and like yes pray for this and the she will watch over your village and everything and then like kagome she goes up to Roku and is like hey what happened with you guys and when you were there, did something happen? Songo's been upset, and Moroku's like, I don't, I don't know. Everything seems fine to me. Nothing that I could recall happened that was weird over there. And Songo's and trying Songo's to fish just, with a rock. She's just like sad, throwing rocks in the water. And then Moroku shows up, and they go to talk. And then Kongo, Kongo, Kagome, <laughs> and Yasha and Shippo are all watching. And Kagome and Shippo are like, Oh, come on, come on, Moroku, you can do it, do the thing. Because he's like buttering up and everything, mm-hmm. telling her how much like he, he, her words of worry mean more to her than any other. Kagome's like, Now that's how you said atmosphere. Yeah, and, and Yasha's like, I don't see it still. He holds her hand, yep. and she's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then he just touches her butt, and she's like, oh, my God, come on. Dude. Just like, the shoulders or something else. That's not my butt. <laughs> and then she just slaps him, and then Inuyasha's just like, well, I told you. Yep. I told you. And then the other two are just like, oh, you idiot. Why did you do that? It only says something about, like, not touching the buns or something. Yeah. Which was really good. <laughs> they're, like, Songo's walking ahead of them, and the four of them are walking behind within a distance, and they're both, they're all just, like, dogging on him. They're like, you need to learn how to read an atmosphere and what a woman's feelings are. And he's just like, huh? Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> And then also Song goes like, yo, I got to get my boomerang repaired. It's got a crack in it. This sucks. This sucks. <laughs> and that's how we end this episode. Yep. Um, also, I mentioned to you this whole thing. Um, they they kind of have to, like, acknowledge the fact that all of these husbands totally bonked a coyote demon, right? No. We will never speak of it again. The, the, they, 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 I did like how they get out. They're like, oh, this is a weird dream now. Anyways. Yep. yep. See you later. Like. Every single one of your husbands just bonked a coyote demon. I hope I hope that you're happy with the choice of who you married, even though you probably didn't have a choice. 
Yeah, I don't think they really had an option there. They didn't. Anyways, that's it for this episode. We have one piece of trivia. Yep. Which also goes into this, what we just talked about. The English translation calls the yokai a coyote demon, but coyotes are only native to North America. (laughs) In the manga, the yokai is a yama inu, or mountain dog, which is a canine species now extinct in Japan. Oh, interesting. Huh. I guess it just, they probably, like, the the localizers are probably just like, coyote makes sense. That's a mountain dog. Yeah, I mean, they can English speakers would understand that. They probably had to come up with a close approximation. Yeah. That be, uh, that's it for this week. Next week we will be discussing episode number fifty-seven entitled "The Fateful Night." Fateful Night, Knife, the Fateful Night, <laughs> in Togenkyo Part One. Which hopefully Songo goes and gets her boomerang repaired. Uh, she will. She's okay. Cool. Everybody's gonna be kind of like split, if I remember correctly. So I guess we're getting a two-part episode, which is going to be nice because they're doing two episodes a week now again. So Yeah, and it's nice that it's not actually going to be split-split. Like, it'll be yeah. it'll be set up so that it's... We can watch it back to back. Back to back. Else happens. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully everything goes all right. Yeah, so uh, idiosha has got to do some... He's got some problems, as he says in the preview. Mm-hmm. And I guess he also loses his powers at some point because he's got the black hair. It's the new moon, yeah. The new moon. He said, just like Twilight. I'm in the preview. He did. No see you soon. <laughs> no see you soon. And so we will we'll get into all of that next week. But if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool. It's where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. And you can buy our books, One Shining Moment, a critical analysis of Love Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. So join us next week as we find out what kind of wild shenanigans old Annie Yash is up to. What's he gonna get up to?